guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, before I get into this video, I just want to say two things. A massive, massive thank you to Fogden and Fogdad yesterday on the live stream. As you can see, the channel's blown up massively. I've gone from about 50 subscribers to 1,000. TDL, you did them proud. Thank you so much for your support. The raid on my channel was incredible. Uh, I've looked through a lot of the comments, but there's so many I can't even see all of them. But the ones I have seen have been amazing responses. So thanks for your feedback, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, now, second thing is this shirt I'm wearing. A lot of you Blades fans will recognise it. It's from the 2010-2011 season. It was given to me by Mark Bunn. And it was worn in the game against Doncos where we drew 1-1 at Bramall Lane. I'm now showing you a pitch from the back of the shirt. As you can see, the bottom of the shirt, the letters are peeling off. So I did that. You did a poor job. It's only been washed once actually as well. So a little disappointing, but at least the main part of the shirt is still intact. Right, guys, now the exciting stuff. We're going to get into the transfer rumours. So I'm going to start off with someone who we're not actually linked with, but in my opinion, I think could be a good fit for our team in our season. This is an Atletico Madrid defender who hasn't played a single game for them this season. Going back to last year, he played 17 times in the league and made 10 starts. His name's Hermoso. He played for Espanyol previously and can play as a left-back and a centre-back. Now, ideally, I'd like to see this guy join us alone because I don't think we have much of a transfer budget to work with. And hopefully Atletico Madrid can see the benefits of having him on loan and bringing him back at the end of the season. The reason why I think this fit is so good for us is because he can play in that left-sided centre-back position. Because as we know, our centre-backs, especially the wide ones, are no normal centre-backs. They have to play more like full-backs or wing-backs these days. So we need someone who's got energy and someone who's not static in their style of play but can play with the ball, can dribble nicely. So I think this is why he'd do well for us. Obviously, it's a different league, more physical, so maybe that could be a challenge for him. I also think in terms of our wage structure, it's possible because I don't know what he's getting per week, but I can't imagine it's any more than between fifty to 75000 a week. Hopefully, if we were to sign him, we wouldn't have to pay all that money. Hopefully, we can meet them maybe halfway and pay 50%. Like I mentioned, this is no, no truth in this transfer whatsoever. This is just me and saying that I think if we were to sign a left centre-back, this is who we should get. The reason I'm saying this is because we're linked with two that Wilder has mentioned, but I can't find anywhere the two that we're linked with. I've been looking all morning, a lot of the afternoon as well. Nothing's come up, so I thought I'd at least give you guys some sort of ideal replacement for O'Connell for the season. Whether you guys agree with me or not, please let me know in the comments. Moving up the pitch, the next one is actually a rumour. It's got some sort of source to it on the internet. And this guy is called Rocker. He plays for Espanyol. You guys may not know, but Espanyol has been relegated to the second tier of Spanish football now. He's got a release clause of 35 million, but I don't know if it's to do with their current financial situation or whatnot. Apparently they're willing to meet halfway and they're willing to sell him for around 17 million. Arsenal have been linked with him for the last month, but nothing solid has happened. Now it just leaves us and Burnley at the front of the race to try and sign him, but nothing's confirmed with either team yet. Apparently, Atletico Madrid are also interested, but surprisingly, the Premier League's offering more money than them. Now, he himself compares his playing style to Chabi Alonso and Busquets, which in my eyes is not the sort of thing I want to hear, because they're, they're amazing players, but I actually think we need a box-to-box -box midfield player, and that sounds like a similar playing style to Berg. So it means either one of them is going to have to adapt and play in the Lundstrom role if, say, Lundstrom leaves, injured, suspended, or needs to go off because he's knackered after playing non-stop uh, all game. I do, however, think I'd be very happy with this transfer. It just seems a little strange that we're suddenly linked with a £70 million signing, yet we're reluctant to give the funds away to Wilder for a £20 million move to Brewster. I don't really understand that. The next one's Mo Besic. This again, not real. It's just me saying maybe it would be an ideal signing for us considering he's not going to get a look in at Everton anymore considering they've signed three amazing and world-class midfielders in Decore, Rodriguez and Allen. So in terms of them trying to clear their wage structure, it might be ideal for them to get rid of him. He's only got one year left in his contract and I don't know if maybe a loan would be ideal, but I think... As long as his wages aren't too demanding, I think it'd be a good squad player for us to have. He obviously played last year. I remember the game against Man City. I was at the game and he made a crunching challenge in the second minute against Laporte. And that just got the crowd going straight away. I think obviously that's not going to happen this season because there's no crowd by the looks of it. But I still think it's a great signing and he sort of epitomises the idea of just giving your all for the team. Now moving on to another player which has a solid rumour from the internet and that's Bologon. Um, he's an under 23s for Arsenal, hasn't made a senior appearance, we've been on the bench yet and Arsenal rumoured to want 15 million, we've bid his 3 million so far, I don't know if we've increased that bid since. 15 million is very hefty for someone who hasn't even had a look in the senior squad. We must rate him very highly though considering how 
much we want him. I don't know if he's going to be in the starting eleven. At first, I thought he was going to be sent out on loan to a lower tiered team, but by the looks of it, it seems like he will be starting for us if he joins, which is promising in terms of he must have a lot of potential to be that quick into the starting eleven. Now, moving on to the next transfer, this is clearing up a rumour. There's no truth in this. Uh, we were linked with Sturridge, but Wilder has come out and said that he's not interested in the player. He obviously had an amazing spell at Liverpool early on in his career, but since then he's been struck with loads of injuries. His most previous spell in England was West Brom. He got relegated with him that season, so if you look at that logic, then I don't really think it's one we want to be looking at. We don't want to be relying our, our chances on a player who's not going to be fit the whole season. I think we'd be lucky if we had him half a half a season. So Now guys, massive news. It seems like we've bidded £17 million for Brewster with a £40 million buyback clause included in the deal. The reason why this is so good is because Palace, who are the only other team trying to go for Brewster, aren't interested in the buyback clause. They only want to include a sell-on fee in the deal. So it looks like we're likely to get him now. we just got to hope personal terms go well with Brewster, and I think it'll be amazing. And the reason why I think this deal is so good is because when we see our team and how desperate we are for a striker, he ticks all the boxes. I think against Leeds, we were desperate for someone like him who would be in a pacey outlet throughout the whole game. The Leeds defence throughout was pretty quiet, and if they had to deal with anything, it was a cross or a header. It was never a pacey uh, player running at them. I think for Brewster, this is a no-brainer transfer because there's a buyback clause included, meaning that if he were to leave, he could go, he could join Liverpool if his potential was fulfilled. Now, some of these transfers are transfers that Yorkshire Live themselves have said we should be looking at. I had to put them in because there's just nothing really solid on the internet in terms of other transfers we're linked with. So I just thought to sort of give this video a bit more time and maybe a bit more discussion in the comments. I'd add these players in. So uh, we're starting off with this lad called Arp. He's previously played for Hamburg, but he's now at Bayern Munich. He had a lot of injuries last season, so it didn't give him any momentum in the season. He was playing for Bayern Munich's second team in the third division. This is a signing which would be depressing, disappointing if we got him. I'm not saying he's a bad player, but for us to have our intentions on survival with a player who's not even made an appearance for Bayern Munich and has barely managed to string two games in the third division is, is very worrying if you ask me. Next one is Islam Samani, previously played in the Premier League with Leicester. Didn't have a great spell there. Revived his career at Monaco. I wouldn't be happy with this one either. He's a very good player, but... When we look at his style of play, he's like a target man. And we already have McBurney who can play as a target man and Sharp. They're both very strong physical players, not much speed. And this is the sim same with this guy. So although it'd be a lone signing, I don't really think it's one I want to be getting. Because I think it would just be a waste of a waste of wages, basically. Moving on to the next one. Now, this is one is very unrealistic, in my opinion. Mariano for Real Madrid. Zidane says he doesn't want him anymore, but... Mariano wants to stay. He's on 300,000 a week, so I don't see us getting him at all. You know, if we want to buy him, probably have to spend at least 30, 40 million, if not more. He's not going to take a massive wage cut, and I can't imagine us giving him any more than 80,000 a week. So I don't see this happening at all. And I know this is this is including loans, but I don't think Real Madrid are going to want to loan him out and uh, pay the majority of the wages for a player who they don't see having a future with. Now that's it. That's the only rumours I can find for us. Uh, so... Sorry there wasn't too many rumours. If you guys have found out any more rumours, please leave them in the comments because I'll be interested to see who we're linked with. I think we all know the strike is the priority, some with pace, because Musse was so pivotal to us last season, but his injuries sort of lost the consistency of him playing in the team. Same with this year as well. If we had him, I think we could have been a bit more positive. Probably would have scored a goal by now. So to get someone else who's got pace would be very promising. I think it's quite hard to predict where we'll finish the season until the transfer window shut because everyone's success for the season does sort of revolve around who they bring in and who leaves the club. Now that's the end of my video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Like I've already mentioned, if there's anyone you'd like to see join the club that I haven't mentioned, please comment below and uh, have a great day. Upblades.